Hey folks, this is Vagrant. Welcome back to The Invincible. Just loading in, it shows you the latest comic strip. Yasna finds Dr. Marit, but it's too late to save her. Oh, and there she is. <laughs> so, we are going to search the excavation area for Koval, which means we're not leaving. Oh, I said introduction a little bit better than that. Hi, yeah, playing The Invincible. Um, last video, we... Well, we woke up on this strange planet, Regis 3, and we're... No, Covel's fine. You'll find it, Doctor. Alive. I'm sure about that. Kind of just trying to piece together the information of what exactly has happened here. We found one of our fellow travellers losing their mind in a tent. We've just found Marit dead, unfortunately, near these rocks. Someone's here. That's Marit's bag. There's someone over this way, though. And now we're looking for Koval. Cove Uncle, C O V U N C L E. Okay, how do I get up here? Don't know. <laughs> it's quite hard to see in this area. But I'm pretty sure I can't get up this right hand side. Probably over there then, right? Someone's up on that ridge. Maybe Koval? Maybe they're okay? Maybe? Like. You know, we're 50-50 so far, right? The odds aren't terrible that someone else has made it out of here alive. The thing is, we crashed, but everyone else was on a separate expedition with ours. We have no idea what killed them. We have no idea why we even came to the planet in the first place. Like, why did we land on the planet? And hell, why are we here in the first place other than to be here before the Invincible gets here? Mysteries abound, ladies and gentlemen. They abound. They were going to not abound, but then they thought they'd go into a bound, and there's a crater here. Hello. Oh no, it's another... Oh no. Yasna, status. Yasna. He's... He's... He's also... Not moving. Koval? Don't do this to me. Not... Oh. You're alive! Did you hear that, sir? Koval's alive. I didn't doubt it for a second, Doctor. What's his current state? Checking. Looks a bit out of it, doesn't he? Parameters normal, yet he's completely unresponsive. What is going on here? Koval? Koval? His eyes are so empty. Just like Crowter's. Koval! What the hell is wrong with you? Are all the symptoms the same as Dr. Crowder's? He's calm. Calmer. Well, at least he's alive. Now listen to me, Yasna. The lander is on its way, but before you get Dr. Cobble on board, I want you to do something. Yasna. I'm listening. Please look around for his journal. It's everywhere. In pieces. <sighs> Not good. Koval was in radio contact with Dr. Gorski. Taking notes. That's exactly why it's so important. These notes may help us find our man. I'll go over them. But it may take a while. The strangest thing seems to be the simultaneous deterioration. deterioration. Ah. Is life out on this planet? No, it's uh, nothing about Dr. Gorski. them. Surprisingly accurate. He wrote down Gorski's every step. Great. Let's get Koval to the evacuation area. Can you carry him, Doctor? <laughs> Won't be pretty hard in 1G. But the gravity here should make things a tad easier. Come on, buddy. Let's get you out of here. So far, both the men have survived and the woman's dead. <laughs> a sexist planet. Is that the ship? I don't think so. Come on, you. Oh, it's the, um, yep. Safe 
from Sam. Well, safe. Did he react? Not at all. Am I meant to be marking this landmark? I don't think so. Come on, buddy. Let's get you out of here. Novik is clearly... He's, just, he's hiding so much information. Everything's falling apart here. I don't know. Maybe we're dealing with some kind of anomaly. An atmospheric or magnetic phenomenon. Uh, wouldn't something like that show on the charts? All those measurements Gorski took? I remember. Maybe he made a mistake. Hello, Andrew. Bot, you're very creepy, but maybe I'm happy to see you for once. Before you were present. Take this off me, it's quite heavy. No? Okay. Plonk you down there. You have a nice little sit down. That's two out of three done. Should probably grab um, Marius so while I can't just leave her body here. I see you up there. Right. Now, Mr. Robot, I feel <laughs> you're going to leave without me. Agreed. Everything points to it. I don't know how long I'll be looking for him. It might take hours before I come back. We also don't know Gorski's condition, nor what he's going through. All right. Dr. Gorski's next, but I'll be back for Merit as soon as possible. I don't want to leave her like this. You won't. I'll send the Androbot. Once Dr. Crowther is safe, she will fly with everybody. Back home. Hmm. Hmm. You, you don't leave without me. You're going to leave without me. Just don't leave without me. I decided to go for Gorski first because, um, I mean, realistically, she's dead, you know, and I, I want to retrieve the body because people want to pay their respects and stuff like that, but she's dead. She's not going anywhere, you know, <laughs> so it makes more sense to prioritize the person who might still be alive. And given the, uh, patriarchal planet we're living <laughs> currently existing on <laughs> probably is alive so let's go try to find Gorski it's got a bit of LV vibes to it doesn't it really in this kind of like jagged charcoal rock what is that over there a field flag hmm this looks like a one way trip oh I should move no time. I'm trying to move. Your self-preservation keeps kicking in and not letting me fling you off cliffs. <laughs> I'm leaving the excavation site. Oh, I probably just have to do this first, actually. How did he come down? I'm pretty sure I just had to right-click on the uh, the flag to enable traversal. My only criticism so far, I do wish I could jump. <laughs> it feels weird hanging around on an alien planet and not being able to jump. You know, it's just such a, it's a time-honored tradition. I just want to bound around like I'm playing an RPG game. But I'm not playing an RPG game. This is not Starfield. Oh. Huh. I've got Gorski's signal. So soon? It's unlikely to be him. Then who? Uh, not who, but what? Don't say things like that. Dr. Gorski, hardly ever parted with it. You were correct, sir. It's just our probe. It looks inactive. Can't be completely broken if you picked up a signal. I'd say it's running in safe mode. Please try to power it on. Do we have time for this? It's for a good reason, Doctor. The probe could prove useful in the search. And Hello, the buddy. You'll see. Let's get you crack a lacking, eh? Need the name probe, Percy. Percy the probe. Okay. I'm opening the probe. Probe. I really need a pop filter on my um mic. I've just realised I don't have one, so my plosives probably plow. Blah blah blah. <laughs> Turning the systems on. No, no, stop. 
Wait for my instructions. There's a button on the left side of the fuse box. Hold it, and then turn the dial again. Okay. And go ahead. Okay. Slime records. Correct. I, I didn't know we had access to them. You couldn't have known. This is not standard procedure. But as they say, extremis malis, extrema remedia. Let's take a look. They do say that. Okay, so that's the first expedition landing. Gorski, Malin, Malice, whatever her name is. There's the fish. They're happy with the fish. A photo of the first days on the surface. They started exploring the littoral zone almost immediately. They reported as much. Wasn't until the fourth day the comms failed. What day are we on now? How long have I been down here? They found the metal structures in the ground. I recognize these structures. This is where they began to dig. Digging, digging. I'm a dwarf, I'm digging a hole. Okay. Twelve hours passed. Three crew members are still there. Dr. Gorski must have left already. We lost contact shortly thereafter. As they dug it up. The probe followed him, and he followed the detector's readings. Going after those metal structures? Yes, that's what I meant. What's next? Emptiness. Oh, real emptiness. Last slide. There's mostly noise. Nothing in particular stands out to you, Doctor. EM fields. And suddenly, poof, people are dead. No need to shout, Astrogator. I'm just letting you know what I see. That's all. You tell him, Yasna. Uh, hang on. An absurdly high electromagnetic field reading. That's something. Sort of. What are the earlier readings? Checking. Oh, uh, well, what's the electromagnetic there? Electromagnetic 4900. Temperature 13. Pressure 920. Radiation 2. Electromagnetic 4900. So 4900 is the number that's. Yeah, 300. Still high in the slide just before. I mean, not nearly as high, though. And then way lower. Earlier, quite normal. It's a huge burst of electromagnetic, electromagnetic radiation. Zero, yeah. Hmm. I'm not totally sure what you want from me here, game. Um, <laughs> are you broken again? It happened in a matter of seconds. No. But there's, there's nothing except dunes, sand, a few rocks, a shadow. Shadow. Another sandstorm, I guess. All right, Doctor. Let's move on. You may turn on the fuses now. I don't know, that's we'll a... The probe with us. It's a weird-looking shadow to me. Looks... organic, almost. Come on, Percy. He was a good boy. And now... Good. I've got it on my radar. Now I can give commands to the probe. And? What do you see? Is it working correctly? I don't know. <laughs> if you run it on manual steering, sir, then, then it works just fine. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm doing. You have a keen eye. I'll put it in auto mode. From now on, it will follow you, Doctor. Oh, it'd be nice to have some company. I, I mean, apart from yours, sir. One second. That's odd. There's no data in the probe's memory. No ID, no nothing. Do you want to give it a new ID? Name it, basically. After all, it'll be with you for a while. So, what's it going to be? Huh. A name for the teleprobe. All right. I can think of something. Copy that. I'm listening. Be Bali Luna. Oh, I guess I'll be Luna. Please enter Luna. L-U-N-A. Done. 
Now, a few more tweaks, and you'll have a flying measurement center at your disposal. Hey, Luna. You'll always be Percy in my heart, though, okay? Right, so, back to finding Gorski, who went, assumedly, down this way somehow. And down there. Luna, how do I climb down the cliff? That's the next question. Oh, here we go, here we go. So you just need a little bit less gravity so you can bounce around like a mongoose. A creature well known for its bouncing capabilities. Because so we're going I this way. I don't see these metal <laughs> structures anywhere. The detector's measurement is very clear. I'm going Whoa. straight on. No crossroads? Branches? Not yet. Look at them. Just one thick, tangled vein. How strange. Okay. Oh, it builds up over here, though. Like a central hub of it. I guess I found the first point. You guess? We have to be sure, Doctor. Well, I'm at the first clear branching of these structures, such as reported by Dr. Gorski. All right. What happened next? Are you inside me, Luna. <laughs> um, what did happen next? Point one. He followed the branch to the right. Another thing he reported was a massive vertical structure. Structures branch underground, G checks the right branch, produced above the surface, water tank underground structures, biggest one yet, inside hill, 150 meters flagged, visible from point four, azimuth 350, distance 200. Okay, so we're going... This way. Don't know why I had to open it to know that I'm going right, but I am indeed going right. And then we're expecting one of them, well, at least some, to erupt from the ground. You excited, Luna? We're gonna go see your brothers and sisters. And wherever they want to be. Be besties, me and you. Always concerns me that they give you like a companion. <laughs> it's funny how just naming it's such a human thing that we name it and we grow instantly more attached to it. You know what I mean? Like I called it Luna, and now I want Luna to be okay. Now I'm worried about Luna. <laughs> the probe detected something. I see that in the readings. What is it exactly? The structure from the notes, it fits the description perfectly. Well done, Luna. I knew I could count on you. I mean, I well, think I found it myself. Well, we can bring it to the surface for no reason. Even in the first stage procedure. Oh, now I'm going to apply for my own. As soon as you find Dr. Gorski, I'll see to it myself. All right, how about that point? What does it look like? Point C. <clears throat> what caught the doctor's attention? Yeah, see, kind of organic, but made of metal. That's kind of what I... Yeah. It looks like some kind of organic formation. A root system? Maybe these structures have the ability to expand. Somehow. Shouldn't they be organic, then? Ah. That's the problem. They look organic, but they're not. Point three. The next point, the third one, is a metal bundle. Running along the bottom of some water reservoir. Interesting. An object as such should be easy to locate. Well, you come down here and do it then, buck up. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa, with such a shoe. Luna. <laughs> Throw me for a bloody loop, Luna. Okay. Follow this along. Oh. Get very tired because of the hill. And hopefully, a water reservoir. Oh, well. I mean, we weren't sure if it was water, but there's fish. I guess fish wouldn't have to live in water. They wouldn't have to even be fish. Fish don't even exist if we're going to get into it. Cladistically, either all of us are fish, every animal is a fish, or fish don't exist. You can't have it any other way. There's no, there's no alternative. <laughs> like, fish is a very unscientific definition. For all intents and purposes, fish doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. But it does help to put things into categories like that sometimes for people. I feel like I've had a lot of discussions like that lately. There was a thing about um, orcas. Uh, someone posted on the Twitter. I will talk about that momentarily. Oh, there's the water. 
was her. And the metal bundle? Yeah. As expected. It's at the bottom. Before you ask, sir, there's little to say about it. All right. So how many are left? Uh, two points. Release us what he told Koval. What he did next? It's hard to assess. Well, the battery and the detector last for only a few hours. So he couldn't have gone much further. Okay. Point four. The fourth point is a structure that fills a rock massive, on top of which he found surface structures. Sounds like a crucial node in this whole system. So I think we need to go this way. Um, there's a thing about an orca. Um, it was tickle, tickle, whatever. Not tickle, but you know the orca, it, it killed someone at SeaWorld. It killed a few people. Um, and, and there was a post about orcas being dolphins. Oh, like, someone called an orca a whale, right? And people calling Gorka a whale is one of those things that when you're a child and you learn some basic rudimentary biology, you're like, orcas aren't whales, they're dolphins. And then when you get a bit older and to learn more, you realise that all dolphins technically are whales. And the amount of people, though, who are, like, actually pushing up their glasses and going, actually, it's a, it's a dolphin, not a whale, was staggering. I don't really have a wider point to make on this, but I just thought I'd mention it. Footprints. Gotcha. I found his tracks. Finally, some tangible evidence that he was going this way. Ah, good. It's downhill all the way, Doctor. I wouldn't be so sure, Astrogator. The next point is at a height of approximately 100 meters. Definitely uphill. More importantly, ominous red glow. <laughs> I think I'll catch up with Dr. Gorski on the other side. Well, that wouldn't be such a bad scenario, right? Of course not. Oh, I wouldn't mind if we bumped into each other before the climb. I think we have the fourth point. Yo. I confirm. It's the fourth one. I see our flag. I have a zoom button. That's cool. I didn't realize. A focus button. Yeah. Okay. How do I not die here? Do I go this way? I'll probably go this way. <laughs> My temptation was immediately to yeah, just walk into it. We'll see what happens. What's the worst that could happen? <sighs> but anyways, it's, it's it's a funny bell curve. Like when you're a two year old here, you see an orca, a killer whale, and you think, oh, it's a cool whale. Then you get older and you realize actually they're dolphins. And you get older and you realize that all oh, dolphins are whales. It's the same thing with monkeys and apes. <clears throat> when you're a kid, you're like, oh, my monkeys. And then you know most people would say that humans are apes. And then you get older and you realise really all apes are monkeys, technically. So. But hey, I don't, I don't think the world is ready for that conversation. <laughs> it's funny, this is like, I would say pretty accepted stuff, but you'll find a lot of competition. A lot of people will I'm argue. Here, if you're wondering, sir. It all just takes longer than expected. I'm I still following it. No need to explain yourself, Doctor. We're in this together. Yeah, but you're sitting up on a cushy spaceship, and I'm down here with Luna, which is lovely, don't get me wrong. So where do you want me to go, girl? I want to go this way, it looks cooler. Although I suspect it's either way. I am kind of following Luna, but I feel like she's kind of just going in front of whichever direction I choose to go in. Although this looks like it could be correct. We made out of metal. Oh. Nah, I didn't think so. All right, come on then, girl. I'm gonna get my sprint on, but you can't do it for long. You can see her vision starts to color sort of pink, and she she gets shattered very easily. And you know the environmental pressures must be pretty extreme. Like that's enough, I think. Like I feel bad if I. Nothing's changed, Astrogator. Understood. They stress any more than that. Oh, Navigator, Astrogator, that's why you'd pronounce it in that way. I was trying to think, why would Gator be relevant? Astrogator. Instead of Astronomer. You see, that's kind of the direction I was going in, but... Astrogator just makes me think... <laughs> of... A, of an alligator in a... Astronaut's suit.
How you doing, Luna? You come here often? What's your story? It's nice little details. It's like my character slows down uphill, as you can see, and then when she gets to the top of the hill, she's going downhill, she speeds up a little bit. You see, slow. And if I go down, it's that kind of slightly awkward quick stepping you do when you're trying to walk down a hill quickly. Or like a particularly steep hill. It's a nice little detail. Status. Three, two, one. The land is departing. Yes, they're on their way. Thank you for your assistance. Without your help, it would have taken much longer. What's the plan for the second flight? The same place? That would work best. Certain, proven. When you and Dr. Gorski come back, I'll send the lander right away. Hmm. Well, I'm glad that a few of them are safe. I've reached the top. The doctor discovered something new from here. Something he called bushes. Huh. I've heard that term before. In their conversations between Kovel and Gorski. No, Jasna. You're the one who reported it to me. Right after you landed. Seriously? Well, I... I... I don't see anything like it now, sir. Hmm. Wait. Koval noted down the parameters. Azimuth 350. A distance 200 meters. Copy that. I'm sending the probe. Can't see a goddamn thing. Got it. Oh, there they are. Oh. The bushes. And the doctor? Hard to tell. Visibility is poor. Huh. It's going to be harder than before. I don't know how the doctor... But when it comes to finding a safe route, there won't be a problem. But you'll have to get there on your own two feet. I suppose a probe will carry out the first task. It's capable, yes? Of course. I set the environment analysis mode. The probe will calculate the best route between your location and your destination. It'll guide you along the defined path. The calculations will only take a moment. You be careful, Luna. I like having a manual focus. Makes me want to whip out the old DSLSR. De la 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 la. Well, there's wind on the planet. That alone is interesting. I mean, there's, I mean, look, that's, that's flora, seemingly. I mean, we don't know. Hi, Luna. <laughs> Lead the way. We could get there and it could turn out to be inorganic for all we know, just taking organic shapes. That's kind of already established as a thing. I say, it's a clever device, this probe of ours. I'm just going to grab a uh, photo. Da, 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 da. Settings, filters. Ooh, I like that one. Filter 6. Everyone keep it. Ooh, I like filter 7 as well. I kind of ruined it. <laughs> Poses. I don't need pose. Death of fields. Oh. Okay, no. How do I hide the thing? Oh, yeah. Ba, 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 ba. Bear with me, bear with me, bear with me. There we go. It's, it's not it's not much of a photo, but it's 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 something. It's something. I've got a potential thumbnail. He could have fly for this long. Yes. Longer than you can stand on your feet. <laughs> Sounds like the perfect research unit. Maybe even better than a human. Well, let's not exaggerate. <laughs> of course, I wasn't being serious. However helpful they may be, they're still just tools in the hand of man. Often faulty. That's why AI is being developed more than anything else. Because at the end of the day, you still need humanity for most jobs. Give it a couple hundred years, though. I'm not so sure if that will still be the case. But hey, I'll be dead. Who cares? <laughs> That's a future generation's problem, but I will continue to fight the fight against AI wherever I can. 
because ugh. I was trying to get some images for a video today, actually. I was doing that Swamp DLC video on Jurassic World Evolution 2, if you've seen it. And I was looking for images of swamps for, like, ground texture. And the amount of crappy AI-generated images I had to go through was insane. And worst of all, it's from proper companies. It's from AI Adobe. It's from Adobe Stock, and they're using AI... Oh, we have a problem. Something serious? I already mentioned the faulty machines, right? Well, the route determined by the algorithm goes over a chasm. I can repeat the command. No, no. I'll go around. Oh, uh, will I? <laughs> uh, unfortunately, this is an outdated model. Such mistakes are inevitable. But the perception module itself has already been greatly improved. Its accuracy increases exponentially. Exponentially? <laughs> Can you imagine us, proteinaceous creatures, developing so quickly, sir? Uh, no, not in the course of evolution. You can't perfect a person like that. That's right, you can't. Well. We wait thousands of years for visible changes. Well, have you started to oh. fear for your position? Well, everything indicates that the clear distinction between humans and robots will soon disappear. And then what? Mm. Well, if we assume that they'll surpass us, things will get complicated. Because in order to program a brain with computing power equal to that of a human, you need a brain with computing power higher than that of a human. Ergo, a man cannot make a machine smarter than a man. Then who else would design it? Self-learning algorithms? Some spontaneous process? Or pure chaos? Something inhuman. That's for sure. Shh. Astrogator. Can you hear that? Uh, what am I supposed to be hearing? That's the point. Nothing. Silence. We're talking about robots, and Dr. Gorski still hasn't spoken on the channel. Well, then, uh, he must be a long way from here. I see Dr. some bushes. Gorski? Are you here somewhere? I don't think yelling's gonna help. Oh, what's going on with that one over there? Seems to be blowing away. It's like, they're like um, they're like dandelions, aren't they? Before they bloom. Well, when they're just seed buds. These bushes are kind of weird. They're very much dandelions. I'd like a brief description. Just keep a distance. Allow me to use a language I would use to describe living forms, sir. Of course. So, they look like pituitary, brush-like formations. Sure they're not living? They can be singular, though in some locations they create a uniform thicket that covers the walls of the ravine in a rusty, brush-like layer. They're high, more or less, from one to several meters. Why are you assuming they're inorganic? It might well be. But, I mean, if there's fish, why can't there be flora, right? They grow out of cracks in the bare rock. That's how it looks, to put it briefly. Would you also venture to guess their significance? Some function? Purpose? Um, defense system? No. Energy harvesting? Colonial system. Staying on the topic of biological analogies, these bushes remind me of corals in a purely visual category because they're far from marine organisms. So I would guess that these are colonial structures, perhaps rock forming ones. However, their main structure has nothing to do with corals. No noticeable mesenchymal tissues, no nidocyst, matocyst, or spirocyst. No visible oral discs. Yeah, all right, all right, Doctor. I didn't ask for a marine biology lecture. Rude. Astrogator, Gorski's not here. I'm afraid he continued to explore. And if he went where I think he did, he might have lost contact with the camp as well as Dragonfly. Yeah, so we will most likely lose contact too. Uh, possibly. Well, there's only one way to be certain. It's your decision, sir. Please continue your search. We have to find it. Yes. That's the unwritten rule, isn't it? Under no circumstances do we leave anyone behind. 
That's right, Doctor. You can lose everything else, but you have to have the crew on board. The living and the dead. This is one of the most crucial imperatives, even though it's not in the regulations. All right, buddy. See you on the other side, I suppose. In we go. To the tunnel. Seems fine so far. Let's get a bit... Where's Luna run away? Luna? I'm all alone. There's no one here beside me. It's very pretty, though. Makes me want to whip up a prehistoric kingdom. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to. Ooh. Oh no. The line's breaking up, but I understood. I'll let you know, sir, when I come out of the tunnel. Do I have to go through? I'm not seeing an alternative. Um. I'm sure, he told me to stay away, <laughs> but I really am not seeing a different path. So, I guess we're going through. Oh, I wondered what that was. That sort of effect at the bottom. It's her. Um, I think it's meant to be her breath misting it up. Well, it's not tried to eat me yet. It's just nice. Well, depends on what you're into, I suppose. This is our solo descent down after the other four. Maybe after the other four run into trouble, maybe we just came down because there was a fish, I suppose. Roger that. All systems work. It's more, much more comfortable than modern ones, isn't it? Look at these lovely chairs. Hopper has landed. I repeat, Hopper has landed. Astrogator, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Any side effects? Landing wasn't too hard on you? All good. Spine still in one piece. No signs of overstrain. Not even shortness of breath. Perfect. Hopefully the hike to camp goes just as smoothly. So what went wrong? Here is, is this not where we? Okay. I'm going outside. Visibility. Hundred percent. The dust has already settled. No, oh, this isn't where it went wrong because we didn't have um we didn't land near the beetle. I've located the second lander. Our people are still on this planet. Ah, very good. I was afraid they might try to fly off, which but wouldn't the be the best idea. Given door, the yeah. Communication with dragonfly. It's jammed open. Sir, something's wrong. What is it? The hatch is half open. Did they report hydraulics failure? How should I know? You were the last person in contact with the crew doctor. Right. All right, Novik. Got that attitude, I tell you. <laughs> I'm inside. Blown circuits. How? How is it? Burned panel. It's not good. Even if they wanted to, they couldn't go back to Dragonfly. Their lander looks damaged, to put it mildly. Or more accurately, it... It seems like a storm has passed through it. Understood. I mean, I don't understand how it happened. But that means... Hopper is the only vehicle that can take us home. Affirmative. Right. But well, then we can't afford another mistake. I'm taking the lander into orbit. I'll send it directly to the camp as soon as we find a suitable landing zone. Continue marching towards camp. We've gotten out of worse than this. Equipment breaks from time to time, that's normal. But now... Go ahead. What's bothering you? This lack of communication. It takes too long. Especially considering there's a cyberneticist amongst them. Yes. It worries me too. Hmm. I'm very intrigued by the... the central mystery that's occurring here. I'm glad I haven't read the book. Although I might do if I enjoy this. 
I'd like to read a little more sci-fi. I did read a pretty cool sci-fi book called uh, The Book of Strange New Things. It's kind of sci-fi, kind of a lot of people. <laughs> kind of sci-fi, kind of religious, weirdly enough. It's about a Christian missionary who goes to another planet and tries to teach, like, to bring Christianity to, like, an alien species, basically. And it's not, like, pro-religion, otherwise I wouldn't have enjoyed it. It's not anti-religion either, I wouldn't say. It's just more of a amusing on religion and and communication and the written word. It's beautiful, Jesus. Oh, damn, you were right, Cobble. It's beautiful here. It really is. I wonder where they got the fish. It's beautiful, but you feel like it'd be hot given the size of that sun. I guess it's not the sun, is it? It's just a star. I don't know, is the sun, is our sun named the sun, or is the sun like a generic term for a star that heats up a planet? I can't imagine that's the case. Because all stars probably heat up a planet. It's whether it's like sensual to the heat of that planet, I suppose. But then, most planets don't have life, so I don't know if that... Hmm. I will have to look up the definition of the sun. Oh, hello. They stop for a break. How do you know? Are there any signs of the crew? I found a cigarette bud and a pack. Someone was smoking here. They'll be thinking about it. So, they didn't give a damn about the regulations. Disrupting the ecosystem. That, that's not the point. I understand you want to minimize the effects of our interference here, Doctor. But the mission's safety is at stake. I don't think I have to explain to you the dangers of igniting a dusty atmosphere. Preserving the integrity of Regis 3's already extinct ecosystem is not a priority in this scenario. Negligible, actually. Security procedures exist for humans. The rule of integrity is for the sake of everything alien to us. We shouldn't place one above the other. What are you saying, yes, sir? The mission and the safety of our people have the highest priority. Always. Always? Are we really that self-righteous? Of course, Doctor. We must be the most important to ourselves. And they must be the most important to themselves. Whoever they will be. In the end, the strongest will survive. Isn't that how evolution works? Not in a biological sense, Astrogator. Besides, I'm not convinced if we should interfere with everything alien to us just because we can. Doctor, interference is at the heart of human nature. Man would still be a monkey if he'd only looked at trees instead of cutting them down. Yes, we have a nasty nature. I that. Also, we are still monkeys. I've just made this point. <laughs> Can you please confirm that? <clears throat> that conversation has made me like Novik a whole lot less. I really dislike that. That human arrogance. I mean, it's not wrong in a very literal sense. You have to look after yourselves, yada yada, but... We, I don't know, we're given this beautiful planet and we've destroyed so much of it in the, in the interest of not self-preservation or anything. It's not survival of the fittest, it's survival of the comfiest, you know? The things we do for a little bit of comfort and ease in our lives. It's hardly things we need to do to survive, is it? We're way past needing to do these things to survive. Actually, the people who need to do these things to survive, the people who need more resources from the planet, are the people who are dying without any resources from the goddamn planet because everyone else is hoarding them for their own self-aggrandizing nonsense. Excellent. Anyway. <laughs> Alright, yes, they're getting a little bit snippy there. Oh, hello. Water source. Ah. Can I swim? I can swim. I really thought the game was going to stop me there. No fish, though. That's really all I was looking for. That is beautiful. It reminds me a little bit of Halo. Which would make sense. Halo would, you know, have been taking some inspiration from a lot of sort of uh, older sci fi novels and works, I'm sure. That's those. Oh, well, yeah, the bushes. So, this is when we would first describe them to the alligator. Jump, jump. 
Maybe this is where we get knocked what out then. This? Astrogator, I found a peculiar inorganic structure. It oh. looks like some spiky metal growths. Artificial plant? Is spontaneous growth possible with this type of structure? Oh, I've never seen anything like this. I wish I had time to run some tests. When the situation is stabilized, we will take samples. I promise. Yeah, then we're instantly going a little bit woozy. Oh, I feel nauseous. Suddenly. That's not it. I feel darkness. trying to emphasize the trippy nature of what's occurring. <laughs> so they are metal, that's interesting. Hmm. Metal roots, metal plants. Hey Luna. I'm intrigued. I'm as curious as George. There's one curious monkey. What was that over there? Oh, hello, beautiful. Are you there? Over. I guess that's a no. Reminds me of um sort of canyons you see in America, in, in North America in particular. Is everything all right? Yes, yes, all good. They're already in the infirmary on life support. Give them a good time. Nice. Yasna rescued Colter. How about their reactions? Have they regained consciousness? I mean, maybe one of them said something. Uh, unfortunately, they're still unresponsive. I'll let you know if anything changes. I'm doing an EEG on them right now. Hmm, I wonder if... You could not rescue them if you make slightly different decisions. I'm curious. What is that? Guess I know where Corsica was going. Aha! I confirm, Corsica was here. His rope is still hanging from the slope. That's a good sign. Since he left it, he intends to come back this way. <sighs> Why hasn't he yet? That's a fancy little gadget in there. <laughs> I love that repelling. Going down after him. <sighs> Tell me one more thing. What did you do with Cobble? I put him in the infirmary on a drip. <sighs> is he still? Whoa. Whoa. One sec. Whoa. Um, no. Not at all. What do you mean? Hey, Luna. <laughs> I'm stuck. I'm hanging with all my weight on the rope, away from the wall. There's still a fair few meters left to the ground. I have a massive head. Can you go back? Using just my hands, strapped with all this extra weight? No, not a chance. What if you sway? Over there. Duh. No good. I can't reach anything. Oh, God. Uh, any other ideas? Um, Luna, can you jump? Jump where? I can just jump off. Is that safe? Not really. A substantial fall on unsteady ground. This is hardly a maneuver that I would describe as safe. So let's take a moment to analyze the situation. I'm thinking 
If Skorsky went down this way and didn't break anything. Yeah, we don't know that yet, sir. He could keep going even with injuries. You keep taking photos off me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Luna, so stop. Do you have another idea? Oh, will I be hanging like this until the end of time itself? There is a certain possibility, or rather uncertain, but maybe it's worth trying. I'm listening. Can you see the probe? Yes. It's flying near me. If I instructed it to fly as close as possible to you, you could grab onto it. Are you sure it will hold me? That I cannot guarantee. It's not riskier than jumping, surely. Because, I mean, either way, if I'm going to the ground, at least this way I've got something. Let's try it. Alright. Let's give it a try. If it's a spectacular fail... You must guide me. Then it means Novik's trying to kill me. One meter forward. Uh, it's still too far. I'll try one more meter then. I, I didn't want to go three too early. Okay. Say so. <laughs> I fell from a lower height. It was a soft landing, though. Oh, the drop isn't as bad as uh, the drop is much less than I thought it was. To be fair, I thought it was going to be way worse than that. Jeez, Luna, you're a good egg. Look at that. Wow. That's a that's a whole lot more metal. It's kind of wild looking. Alright, let's go this way. We had our last contact with Regis a few minutes after noon. Even then, Dr. Gorski was walking alone. Communications blew up shortly before he got here. This place is amazing. It's all made up of these structures. Except they don't look like creations of nature anymore. Maybe that's why Dr. Gorski, not to mention the Alliance. Well. If we're looking for something on this planet, this could be it. These structures form entire multi-story complexes. They look like a city. No, no. <laughs> There's no point in jumping to conclusions yet. Okay, I just, I just waiting so I can get photo mode out. Uh, hide it in the face. That's more like it. I want her in it. Can I? That's not bad. Eh, that might do it for me. She does have a massive head. <laughs> Let's go forward a little bit. See what we can do here. This is a spectacular looking game. I'd love to zoom out more. There's a flag over there. Dr. Gorski set up the flags. Sir, he kept going, despite the lack of communication with the rest. You'd have to see it with your own eyes, sir. This place. Gorski may have lost himself in his discovery. Are you joking, Doctor? Lost himself? Gorski? He may not have respect for the unknown, but he has his feet firmly on the ground. I think he must have discovered something. And since he suffers from excessive ambition, he's capable of stupid acts in the name of a breakthrough. Are you receiving a signal? What signal? From Dr. Gorski. No, no. Why are you asking? He tried to open up a connection, set up a transmitter. There's nothing on the comms, but I'll check the record history. Please give me a moment. Left or right? Can I go left? Oh! Well, it says blocked, so <laughs> let's go right. It seems safe. All right. I'll try to walk this kind of bridge. Two more hours. Huh? That's all, Ghost. 
he has left of oxygen at best. And at worst? He's just finishing it up. Though it all depends on his activity. If I remember correctly, there was a risk of methane poisoning. That's right. According to Dr. Krauter, negative symptoms can appear after an hour. Maybe after a few hours. I think you'll find Gorski by then. Let's hope so. These constructions don't have a clear division into functions. They're huge, complicated, and uniform at the same time. Do you have any idea where all this could have come from? I'm aware without tests you can't do much. But let's say on first inspection. It's hard for me to imagine that any biological forms could survive here. The interiors of these structures are filled to the brim with wires and rods. So maybe this metal builds up somehow, by itself. Oh, you've already said something similar before. Just after landing, when you found those bushes. Yes, right. Well, it's like we're talking about the AI, the AI, right? And that the AI would have to replicate itself and kind of make it would take an AI to make a smarter AI, essentially, and it would take sort of random generation to get there because we can't code something smarter than ourselves. Yep, wherever I look, there's metal. This is very strange. Whoa! Yes, sir. What's going on? Just a sec. I need to get... I need to... I need to get out. Phew. The load-bearing capacity of... Ah! Again! Maybe you should use the detector. Will indicate the thickness of the structures. Okay. But I can't move the detector unless I. Uh, how to the frying pan. Oh, I Into just a hole. got that completely wrong. Ah, <laughs> oh, bloody hell. Oh, I'm going to sound like a broken record, but the oceanic forms here are similar to those on Earth. So there should be similarities on land as well. Similarities? Life, Astrogator. I still think there should be life on the surface of Regis 3. But there isn't. So where did it all go? Maybe this is genetic code. I can see that. It looks matrixy. <laughs> okay, so I think I'm meant to like like that bit there. I think I'm meant to avoid, right? So I'm meant to go like here. Oh, damn it! What? What is it this time? Take a guess, sir. The sinkhole. Uh huh. I don't. I can't tell what it is I'm meant to be looking for. <laughs> I really can't. I thought initially. Oh, I'll just aim for the solid green bits. That seems like the logical thing to do. But in reality, I do that, and it doesn't work anyway. <laughs> so, which is it I'm meant to be aiming for? The solid green makes the most sense because. <laughs> she just keeps falling. I don't seem to have a choice in the matter. <laughs> I'm not even going to bother. It's a walking. I'm not going to die anyway. It's fine. I like. <laughs> I feel like I was doing both. Maybe I just didn't do it well enough. Doctor, I found something after all. From Gorski. Oh. So I don't know. Tell. There are errors in the transmission header. I'm going to play it so we'll find out. Gorski to base. I repeat, this is Gorski. Base, come in. No doubt, it's him. Well, let's keep listening. But as soon as you report anything, Doctor, I'll stop the recording. Oh, bugger. No confirmation again. I report. I've made an amazing discovery. Geometric structures that... 
heads of bushy pointed rods and slats. Mostly, but not only, molybdenum, carbon, tungsten, altogether similar to a giant integrated circuit. A million swarm of tangled cables. Not a trace of electric current, polarity, not even residual magnetism. Maybe once upon a time, centuries ago, petawatts or exawatts of power flowed this way. Yeah, to compare with something, it's, it's probably a machine. Some kind of information collective structure. Maybe it was some kind of electronic brain. It makes me think of the Lyrans. A race of extinct sentient beings. Supposedly, they knew about light astrogation before we invented the wheel. They had to save themselves from the explosion of Nova. They sent ships. The remains of the remains of those ships have been found ash to a chip glued together. I've seen hypothetical schematics. The structures here remind me of those. Okay, moving on. Readings. Well, that's it. What follows is just a humming noise. Any thoughts, Doctor? Oh, so far, it all leads to one conclusion. This is not a place for a man, nor for any humanoids. Then who is it for? Maybe it's really an alien technology. Those Lyrans. Uh, as far as I know, all information about the Lyran civilization is just guesswork. Many consider Lyrans to be just a myth, so I wouldn't take it too seriously. Well, I think there might be something to it. I just want to disagree with, way, with him. <laughs> right, Gorski did lose himself in his discovery, in spite of everything. I can see the relay up close. It looks broken. Hmm. Such damage could be caused by a local meteorological phenomenon. A severe thunderstorm with lethal and electrometeors. So, the weather is to blame for all of it? Well, I can't think of a better explanation at the moment. Okay. Uh, it's 8.09. Oh God, it's 8.09. Oh right, so I've not saved for a couple minutes. We'll keep going until it saves. God, it's 8 in the morning. What the hell happened? <laughs> Where did my day go? <laughs> Whoa, it just gets bigger and bigger, ladies. Okay, let's not go that way. More footprints. There are more handprints. Traces. This time handprints. And a drop detector. What did I hear you right? Yes, sir. You heard correctly. I'm afraid we must be ready for any eventuality. Well, that doesn't mean we should assume the worst. I still believe you'll find him, Doctor. Me too, buddy. Save, God damn you, save! <laughs> I have no control over this. I must play until the game deems I am no longer allowed to play. This is very cool, though. I mean, this is, this is, this is the cool thing about video games, like this right here, like, what other medium, can you, you can't do it this in any other medium, games just offer immersion and exploration and wonder in a way unparalleled by anything else, like, you can have a film with stuff like this, but I don't think it would be as incredible if you weren't in control looking at it yourself, you know, I just, I think that adds another element to it. I had to sneeze. Oh. Oh, that's a lot of stuff. I found something. Again. Uh, more of the same stuff. Gorski's things. More traces. Fine. Actions devoid of logic. Back in the camp, you reported Marit's abandoned things. A backpack and a journal, yes. Uh, this scene looks disturbingly similar. Mm. 
No one of sound mind would decide to go down this way. And yet Gorski... Doesn't look that bad. I don't think I've got a great sense of scale. <laughs> I guess when you're wearing these like heavy suits and everything like that, every drop, every potential drop just becomes much more intimidating, really. Oh, not again. <laughs> Game, come on. <laughs> no. <sighs> okay. Ouch. Those sinkholes again. Yes. Was it meant to fall there? Maybe. Hmm. <laughs> It'll happen eventually, okay. Oh. I don't think I'm getting back up here, though. Hmm. I don't know. Oh, this looks safer, though. This looks alright. I mean, again, I, I just went for the dark, the, like, the more green section. It felt like the logical thing to do. And I was like, no, no, no. Down you go. Am I going through there? Tracker. Oh, hello. Finally. Position. Uh, not yet. Gorski! Somewhere in this maze. Gorski, are you here? It's me, Yasna. Still nothing. Yeah. Come on, Gorko. Gorsi. Gorskoko. I found his backpack. You know what that means, sir? Yes, he's without oxygen. We must hurry. Gorski? Oh, saved. Okay, right, we're running there. <laughs> Next video, we shall chat to Gorski, find out what's going on here. Thank you for joining me. Cheers, much of as always. Bye bye.